Today's video was sponsored by Conflict of Nations, a free online strategy game where you choose a real country to lead into a modern global conflict. Up to 128 other players are moving their units across the map in real time. So to win, you need to form alliances and construct all types of units, including tanks, jets and submarines. Conflict of Nations is a huge game though. A game round can take weeks to complete, which makes logistics as necessary as tactics. The key to victory is to think ahead and forge alliances. What I like most about the game is that you can play with the same account on both PC and mobile. That convenience sets it apart from other games. Using our link below, you will get an exclusive gift, 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. The offer is only available for 30 days, so move fast. This is a graph showing Russian exports to India. Here's another showing Russian exports to Iran. In both cases, there's an uptick starting about a year ago. The reference is unmistakable. After losing access to European markets for invading Ukraine, Russia turned to Iran and India to make up for some of the shortfalls. Yet, it can take years to achieve overnight success. And as much as Russian, Iranian, Indian trade has grown, the infrastructure groundwork has been long in the making. For years, Moscow has sought to bolster its trade along a vertical axis by ship, rail and road. Key to this is the International North-South Transport Corridor. By connecting St. Petersburg to Mumbai via Iran, the 7200km corridor will bypass both Western and Chinese geopolitical spheres. The aim is to make Russia's southward trade effectively sanctions proof and encourage new avenues of commerce. It's an ambitious project, one that shares more economic interests now than before the Ukraine war. But the prospects of the entire undertaking hinge on India. Getting New Delhi's full cooperation is necessary to make things happen. Russia's strategic goal, therefore, is to make the right move at the right time. But its diplomatic goal is to convince everyone else it was their idea. Iran is a fortress, surrounded by mountains on three sides and an ocean on the fourth. These physical barriers have kept the country's borders roughly consistent over the centuries. In recent times, however, Iran's troubles have come not so much from outright conquest, but from domestic pressure, economic sanctions and covert foreign interference. The Iranian state thus serves as a fortified land bridge between the Caucasus, the Middle East, Central Asia and South Asia. But Iran's pariah status has left its geo-economic potential largely untapped. Even so, nothing builds friendship like a common enemy. Much like Iran, relations between Moscow and Washington have deteriorated, at first gradually, then suddenly. And since the United States is the world's preeminent naval power, the sea-bound trade of its rivals is at risk. This includes the standard shipping route between Russia and India, which runs from St. Petersburg through the Baltic, around Iberia, through the Mediterranean and the Suez, across the Red Sea and around Yemen to Mumbai. Seeking to reduce this dependence on maritime trade, in September 2000, Moscow signed a deal with the governments of India and Iran to establish the International North-South Transport Corridor. And in the following years, Kazakhstan, Belarus, Oman, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia and Syria joined the agreement, with Bulgaria as an additional observer. Not everyone made the cut though, after years of negotiations, Russia, Azerbaijan, Iran and India emerged as the backbone of the corridor. As things stand today, the International North-South Transport Corridor promises a multi-module network of rail and port connections. The planned route will transport cargo from St. Petersburg and Moscow to Volgograd and then to the port city of Astrakhan in the south. From there, the route splits in two. The western branch runs via rail passing through Baku, Azerbaijan, and continues to Iran. 
Meanwhile, the eastern branch is a maritime connection going from Russia to Iran across the Caspian Sea. The parallel routes join at Bandar and Zali and move south until forking again near Zahedan. Both rail lines then move to anchor by the port cities of Bandar Abbas and Chapahar. From there, the routes cross the Arabian Sea and terminate at Mumbai. In total, the vertical corridor is about 7200 km long, substantially less than the 16,000 km Mediterranean route. Test runs suggest that the North-South Transport Corridor could reduce shipping costs by one-third and journey times by two-fifths. Apart from enabling trade between Iran, Russia and India, the project would open up the energy reserves of the Caspian Sea. This includes not only substantial oil and gas riches, but also its solar, hydropower and wind power potential. In effect, the North-South Transport Corridor gives the three states a foot in the door when it comes to Caspian resources. Often though, an idea must be burned down before it can rise from the ashes. And Russia's desire to reinvigorate the projects derives more from economic necessity than cool detachment. Far from being a priority, the corridor as a concept remained largely dormant for two decades. It was only with the recent sanctions by the West that the project took on new meaning as an economic lifeline for Russia. To this end, Moscow, New Delhi and Tehran have invested 102 heavy infrastructure projects along the axis of the corridor, totaling $38 billion. This includes Moscow's $1 billion plan to make the Don-Volga Canal commercially navigable. By connecting the Volga and Don rivers, Russia would unify its major waterways into a single system. It would also join the markets of the Caspian Sea to the Black Sea. In the process, new value chains would emerge along the North-South Transport Corridor, extending from Russia to Iran. Yet in the process, cargo would have to pass through Azerbaijan, either by land or sea. Baku and Tehran have each pledged $500 million to the Astara Rasht Railway and are working on completing it by 2025. This railway is perhaps the most crucial component to the corridor's success. It has also been the most difficult engineering-wise. The rail tracks go through rugged, mountainous terrain and feature 53 tunnels and 45 bridges in total. Since Azerbaijan stands at the nexus of competing transit routes like the Middle Corridor, the port of Baku will likely be at maximum capacity for the foreseeable future. The Astara Rasht Railway could thus prove a more reliable outlet for Russian-Iranian trade. Another unfinished piece of infrastructure is the associated rail line from Zahedan to Jabahar. It is key to integrating the land and maritime routes into a multi-module corridor. But coming at a price tag of $1.6 billion, it is an expensive project. Iran's partners are not much help either. New Delhi prioritizes connectivity between Mumbai and Chabahar, while Moscow's resources are tied up in its war effort in Ukraine. That leaves few, if any, options for Iran to gather enough foreign investment. These physical projects have also been accompanied by political statecraft. In January 2023, the Eurasian Economic Union finalized a free trade agreement with Iran. Once the deal enters into force, bilateral trade will accelerate. For Russia and Iran, engaging neutral states provides much-needed trade diversification away from Chinese economic hegemony and the Western bloc that views them as pariah states. Moscow and Tehran respectively hold the gold and silver medal for the most sanctioned governments on the planet. So the natural response of both has been to move closer to neutral states like India. For its part, New Delhi recorded a four-fold increase in Russian trade throughout 2022. In particular, Western sanctions targeting Moscow have allowed India to scoop up surplus Russian oil at discount. The North-South Transport Corridor will cement this mutually beneficial economic relationship by carving it into Eurasia's physical landscape. 
and the match is seemingly made in heaven since India loves buying as much as Russia loves selling. But the path of true love never ran smooth, and New Delhi has its own motives for boosting its trade dealings, some of which brush up against the Kremlin's geopolitical objectives. India plans to boost its total trade value from $640 billion to $2 trillion by 2030, and the North-South Transport Corridor is a means through which it can achieve its objectives. Relatedly, since 2018, New Delhi has taken over operations at Chapahar port in Iran. Eventually, this will allow India commercial access to the Persian Gulf with a view to entering Central Asian markets via further infrastructure projects. For India, the strategic logic of the Chabahar side project is to outflank the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Yet, by openly challenging Beijing's interests, New Delhi could open a rift with Moscow. Relations between Russia and India go way back. Lawmakers on both sides will claim to be friends of old but in truth are more friends of convenience. As for Russia and China, mutual disdain for Washington pushes them closer together, but they cannot shake off their long and tumultuous history. Meanwhile, India is edging closer to the Western Bloc, deepening its ties with the American-led Quad coalition. On top of that, since last year, China has become a key destination for Russian oil. Having lost access to European markets, Moscow cannot turn its back on Beijing. So should Chinese-American tensions escalate, India and Russia could find themselves on opposite sides of the fence. All these considerations shroud the faith of the vertical corridor in uncertainty. Still more complicated is Iran. Its relationship with neighboring Azerbaijan has been tense for some time, partly due to the latter's close relationship with Israel and Turkey. There are also anxieties regarding latent separatist tendencies in Iran's majority Azerbaijani regions. If Iranian Azerbaijani separatists take to arms and the situation goes sideways, Iran could go down the path of Yugoslavia and balkanize. So if the new connections via the Astara Rasht railway threaten the integrity of the Iranian state, Tehran may have second thoughts about the whole project. Should this happen, the corridor could be shelved indefinitely. Overall, the International North-South Transport Corridor is a project that stands to raise the profile of Russia, India and Iran but each state wants to draw its own advantages from the deal. Though each party agrees with the general thrust, their divergent policy priorities could foreshadow a rift in the future. But Russia is a veteran in geopolitics. It knows how to play the game, and more importantly, it knows when to flip the board and start a new game. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. Help us to remain independent and self-sufficient by joining our Patreon community. Doing so will give you access to some neat perks and you'll have our gratitude. Check out the Patreon links in the description and thank you for watching and sawal. So